Welcome to the world famous streets of Monte Carlo. We're here, of course, for the Monaco e Prix, and I'm going to give you a little guided tour of this pit lane with the help of a very special friend, Effie Bot. Come on, here, boy, come and see. This is the DHL Effie Bot. It's an autonomous technology that they use in distribution centres to help people around those factories stop them having to carry and lift heavy things. It's a really clever bit of kit, and today he's going to help me show you around in 360 degrees. Right, well let's start with the Tachita team. Now this is a team new to Formula E this year, a new driver in Esteban Gutierrez, last time out in Mexico, Mexican driver of course at his home race and scored his very first point. It was a really good debut for him. On the other side of the team, on the other side of the garage, Jean-Eric Verne. Now he had a very frustrating Mexican e -Prix. He was stuck behind um, D'Ambrosio for a very long time, just couldn't get past, but he did manage to get podium. So there's a lot of positivity in this garage. They know that that win, that very first win in Formula E is just around the corner and that's really good for everybody. Next up is Jaguar. Now this is again a new team to the sport for this year. They started, it was a difficult beginning for them. I think they know that. They had a number of issues. They were two years behind most of the other teams of course in terms of development of the car and the understanding of, of everything it takes to succeed in Formula E. But things are really coming good for these guys. They had, again, a very good Mexican E-Prix, both drivers scoring points. There was lots of celebration in the garage. It was really nice to see. Things are moving in the right direction here for these guys and they know it. And I think that's a really nice thing. This is a big brand coming into Formula E. It's important for this sport, for teams like this to do well. And I think there are, there are very, very good signs that things are turning um, into, into a lot of positivity and some great results for both of those drivers. Next EV. Now, this is Nelson Piquet's team, the original Formula E champion. And yet last year, they had a very difficult year. This twin motor setup on the car made it very heavy, difficult to drive. They are the only team in Formula E to retain the twin motor setup for this season, although they've made huge revisions to it. The car's a lot lighter, a lot easier to drive. In qualifying mode, they're doing very, very well. They're getting the car up there. And in Mexico, Oliver Turvey had a sort of mixed event, didn't he? He was winning that Grand Prix, that uh, E Prix. He was leading by a mile before the car frustratingly let him down. So they're moving, they're on the up here, but their qualifying pace around this particular circuit in Monaco could see them do very, very well. You get on the front here, you've got a great chance of taking the chequered flag first. Andretti. Now, again, this is a team that we know and they know have made some operational errors along the way. They got their pit stop times wrong last time out. They had some reliability issues. Antonio Felix da Costa didn't finish that race because of a drive shaft failure. So frustrating for them when they know there were points on offer in Mexico. Such a chaotic race. They could have got something out of it, but those silly small little errors that cost them so dearly really affected their, their opportunities there. So they know that, they're aware of them, they've addressed them and they hope that, that clearly that's not going to happen this time out. Uh, now Venturi, this is the local team, they are a Monaco based team. Um, just down the road from here, a team with a huge amount of history in electric vehicles, but it's been a very difficult start to their Formula E campaign. They have had a number of errors, a number of um, reliability errors uh, and issues with the car that have just meant that they are lagging behind in this championship. They've lost so much ground now to the teams in front that it's very, very difficult for them to have any sort of impact on this championship. What they will be hoping, and I know they've done an awful lot of work in the simulators and with their car, they'll be hoping to try and claw some of that back, build on this championship now for the rest of this season and look forward, I guess, to, to, to next year. Um, Mahindra as well, again, this is a story that's common from Mexico. It's a frustrating race. They were doing so well. Both drivers looking to score high amounts of points before an incident at the end uh, involving Nico Prost took both drivers out of that situation and, and ended up spinning broken car bits everywhere. Um, so a really difficult one. But those guys, I know, have got a huge amount of, um, of positivity about what they're doing. They know their car has underlying pace. Um, which, is, which is great, of course, moving forward. Qualifying is going to be so important here because if you can get it on the front row, it's so difficult to overtake, but they think they have a good chance of doing that and scoring some high points in Monaco. Um, Faraday, um, Faraday Future Dragon Racing. Now, these guys, again, had a, a, some issues, technical issues in the past. They've had some operational issues. They know that and they've addressed them by bringing in some new people into the team, by changing some of the technical specs of their cars to address those reliability issues. They've changed both gearboxes in Mexico to try and address some of that, and they think they've cured those reliability issues with, with those changes. So much more hopeful. They've ironed out some of the operational issues. Lots of work going on on the software side of things, 
as there is with every team in Formula E, but particularly in that garage, and they think they've made huge steps since the beginning of this season. Virgin Racing, now this is a team that in season two, a little bit like the next EV team, had a twin motor setup on the car. It was very, very difficult to drive. It was so heavy, the braking was, was really difficult for both of these guys. And actually, it's testament to the team that they scored so many points in season two with that particular car. They, they managed to drag out a number of very, very good results. And I think moving forward into this year, they've ditched the twin motors, they've changed the car. It's much more easy to drive. The braking particularly has improved a huge amount. And in the hands, especially of Sam Bird, I think we could see a really strong result here in, in Monaco. He is a, a bit of a Monaco king uh, from other formulas. I know the track is certainly a little bit different here, but he loves this place. Um, and I think part of driving around Monaco in any formula is getting into that groove as a driver, is getting yourself, your confidence built up over the various sessions throughout the day. And I think Sam Bird comes here with a huge amount of confidence uh, in himself already. Now, this is a team that had a fantastic result in Mexico. It was a story of that weekend, really. Lucas de Grassi's win from way, way back on the grid, an unlikely victory, and it was all about race strategy. And this is something we don't see very often in Formula E, race strategy playing a huge, huge part in the outcome of this race. What happened in Mexico with Lucas managing his, en his energy for that huge 45, 46 lap stint has changed the way every other team is now thinking about approaching races. Track position is absolutely key. So you might see teams undercutting each other, taking a pit stop a lap before somebody else to try and get track position on track because overtaking is so hard. If you can be in front, you've got a great chance of staying in front. So that's a team closed that gap up at the front of the Drivers' Championship to just five points now. He's in touching distance of this guy here, Sebastian Buemi, who so far has run away with this championship, won every other race, but had a terrible weekend in Mexico. And the thing about this championship in Formula E is when these guys have a bad race, if somebody like Sebastian Buemi doesn't maximize everything that he has with the opportunities in Formula E, the guys next door, particularly in Lucas Tegrassi, have every opportunity to take advantage of those mistakes and those errors. But this is the team to beat. This is a great car that's very, very light. They've been able to put ballast right to forward, forward in the keel of the car, which helps with the balance of the car, helps the drivability, uh, and makes the drivers much more confident on things like the brakes and turn, initial turn in at some of the very tight and twisty corners we have on Formula E track. So, this is the one to beat. This is one that everyone's looking at. Everyone's trying to, to sort of mimic. Um, and, you know, they also have to smooth their operation. They've got a great car, got great performance, but the tiniest error can really affect you very seriously in Formula E. There's not much, much room for error on the street circuits. The whole event is a very short and tight schedule. So you've got to get everything right on the right day. And that's what everyone's working towards. These guys are the ones to watch around here. Again, if they can get qualifying right on Saturday afternoon, come the race, on four o'clock on Saturday afternoon round here, they have got a wonderful chance of extending their lead in this championship. There you go. That is a pit lane tour of the Monaco e -Prix. It's a fantastic location. I hope the weather's gonna be just like this. I hope you guys enjoy the race.